Few produce the quality and the quantity of NFL players like the LSU Tigers, and uh, such should be the case again here in the 2021 NFL Draft, which is coming up here real soon. we got Lon Phillips Sullivan on the line to break down the current and the former Bayou Bengals, and we'll start, uh, Lon, with these guys moving on to the NFL. And, of course, LSU Pro Day was on Wednesday, and it was quite the impressive showing. Oh, yeah. What's up, Mark? I mean, when we're talking about Jamar Chase, Terrace Marshall, even the less talked about Racy McMath, that receiver who you know would have been the number one guy almost anywhere else. Um, the receivers who were going out there today were unbelievable. And then you even got Torrey Carter, unbelievable fullback, um, very lightly used in the 2019 or even 2020 offenses at LSU, but who I believe could be a you know a really huge asset at the next level. But what you just saw was these guys put on a showcase, a display of absolute power. Um, these guys are going to be brilliant in the NFL. Uh, Jamar Chase especially. Uh, Jamar Chase just went from strength to strength. Uh, I mean, any type of concerns over just being six foot, and he, he's not six foot three, and he's not six foot four. It doesn't matter. He's making catches like he's six foot four. Uh, the wingspan, 74, seven eighths inch. Uh, bench press 23 reps, but that was from a past video. He was not bench pressing this morning. Um, uh, 40 yard dash, 4.38, only 0 0.05 seconds behind national champion track sprinter Kerry uh, Vincent Jr. from LSU. Unbelievable time there from Jamar Chase when they asked him, "Do you want to run? Do you want to run that again?" Uh, he was like. I, I, I'm good. I'm good. Um, you know, with his vertical jump, he he was saying that he wanted his personal goal was to jump 41. He was expecting to maybe jump 39. He hit that 41 inch mark, uh, broad jump 11 feet. But to me, the shuttles were the most impressive. Uh, the 20 yard shuttle, 3.98 seconds. It shows just this outrageous, uh, frenzied ability to turn and change the motion and completely just turn defensive backs into pretzels, frankly. Um, Jamar Chase, I believe the Bengals will not be able to resist uh, Joe Burrow's, you know, Joe Burrow's demands. I think Joe Burrow and Jamar know what they can do at the next level. They've just proved uh, just through a little sample size of what they could do at college level. But, you know, he's probably going to go number five for the Bengals if it's, if it's my, you know, my prediction. But Terrace Marshall. Oh, sorry, Mark, were you wanting to say something? Well, I just uh, know that uh, in tracking social media throughout the day, there were all sorts of gifts out there uh, putting Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase together and uh, the, the possible reunion of those two. And Jamar Chase, of course, um, even caught more touchdown passes than Justin Jefferson did two years ago, 20 and 84 catches and was just off the charts. When you when you combine uh, the athleticism that you just displayed and explained from a Jamar Chase in a controlled environment with a guy who can take all those measurables in a controlled environment and actually do it on the field when it counts and then do it in the best conference against the best defensive backs, regardless of what the measurements say. The uh, As you say, he's not prototypical 6'4", but um, man. I can't imagine that he's not going to be a player at the next level. Oh, Mark. I mean, I think he's going to be a very fun, fun player to watch. I mean, look at Justin Jefferson. Every time he caught the ball, it was, it was a highlight. Uh, you would, I mean, at least for me, I, I'm not going to speak for anybody else, but I was screaming at the television anytime the Vikings were on and Kirk Cousins. He'd go entire first halves without throwing the football to anywhere near Justin Jefferson. I mapped every single target Justin Jefferson's way this season when I was writing his uh, rookie goat piece, which is available on LSUodyssey.com. Very popular piece. Awesome piece. Uh, we had a lot of fun writing that. Just going through every just catch of this guy's, you know, just mapping out everything that, that guy did as a rookie was just brilliant. And now, you know, you see him, you know, he's taking part in, in today's uh, pro day. And uh, he's checking out what his friends are doing. He's there supporting them. You can see J uh, Justin Jefferson on NFL Network. Uh, they're hanging out with him. And uh, it's it's just brilliant. It's what 
LSU receivers do. Uh, you know, Terrace Marshall Sr. just told us uh, this in an interview the other day. Uh, Justin has been talking to Terrace and giving him a lot of advice as well. And, you know, moving on to Terrace Marshall, who I feel like, you know, he didn't he didn't uh, wow as many people as Jamar Chase because I think Jamar Chase, we hadn't seen him play football in so long. We hadn't seen him do any football activities in so, so long that I think anything Jamar Chase was going to do today was going to wow and stun anybody, and especially when you do – what he did, which was absolutely historic type of type of measurables, type of type of times. Um, of course, it's going to turn heads. But Terrace Marshall, I, I mean, he ran the same 40 yard dash time, 4.38 seconds. Um, I just outrageous um, vertical jump of 39 inches. So he hits, you know, that under two inches of Jamar, but still 39 inches. Uh, I just. I, it's just crazy. Um, Jabril Cox, he did not participate today. I, I believe he had some type of injury, maybe a hand, hamstring or something like that. But, yeah, he did not participate. But Jacoby Stevens, uh, I really loved what I saw out of him. I think he helped his draft stock a lot. The vertical jump, the 42-inch vertical jump from him with his weight was absolutely awesome. Uh, 4.5 seconds, first attempt on the on the 40-yard dash, not not. Not horrible for him at all. That's actually just brilliant uh, for someone, Jacoby Stevens. And I don't think anybody even saw that time coming. Uh, Tyler Shelvin, he weighed in at 350. There's been a lot of talk about his weight. Uh, he, he actually talked on in his press conference about how r- former Tiger ESPN analyst uh, Ryan Clark was actually uh, helping him uh, train for, for the combine and for the, for the pro day, for all this stuff. And he weighs in at 350, 6'2", you know, his wingspan, 81 fourth, 40-yard dash, 5.4, um, vertical jump, 20 and a, 28 and a half inches. The question is going to be all about his pass rushing ability at the next level. Everybody knows what he can do in, as, you know, as far as disturbing a pocket, uh, just completely destroying protections, uh, clogging the backfield, that type of thing. But can he, can he enter the backfield? multiple upon multiple times a drive, let alone a game. Uh, can he keep that weight down? Uh, there's been a ton of talk about the guy, the guy's weight. I hate to keep harping on it, but he does need to keep that weight down to be successful in the NFL, especially at his position. Um, Kerry Vincent, uh, Kerry Vincent, wow, 4.33 seconds. Uh, I mean, you expect him to beat all the other receivers. He, he did just barely, but – um, this guy, speed, speed, speed. I think he's going to be a guy that may, may be a dark horse in this draft where no one's going to be looking for him except for that one team. And that one team's going to draft him out of nowhere. It's going to shock everybody. And everyone's going to, Kerry Vincent has this type of speed. And they're going to talk about Kerry Vincent Sr., his father, who drafted by the Saints, had an arena league career, passed away back in 2018, tragically. I, uh, Kerry opted out before last season in due in part because he caught COVID as he said today. Um, and it, it, he overcame that. And uh, I think he, what he showed today was absolutely show stopping. Uh, just, I don't think it, dra- it, it absolutely, you know, exploded his draft stock, but I feel like there's going to be that one or two teams who are going to be paying keen attention to what his abilities are. For me, I would draft this guy in the first three rounds 100% if I had the need because he's just got speed you cannot teach, you cannot coach. He's just an unbelievable, uncanny player. Uh, Another receiver, Racy McMath, he actually ran a shocking 4.34 seconds, just 0.01 seconds behind a national champion track star in Kerry Vincent Jr. I just – that. That's unbelievable speed from Racy McMath, Mark. Um, but yeah, I, you know he had a very disappointing vertical jump, thirty-four inches for me. That I just, I that's come on, man. I don't think that's, I don't think that's acceptable. Uh, you know, he's got to do a lot better than that at, at his height and what he can do. Um, he he has far more aerial ability than that. I don't think that will show anything of what he can do in the NFL, especially in the aerial department, 
Torrey Carter, you know, this guy has not been getting much play, but he is a hitting machine. He he will destroy people out of the backfield. He's great in pass protection. But then as you saw him running routes uh, with the other receivers for LSU, you know, Terrace, Jamar, and, and Racy, he was – I think he may have pulled off the catch of the day. I think uh, Jamar had an absolutely disgusting catch mark, but – where he like was going out to the out and, and made this really sick catch. It's it's right there on LSUodyssey.com if you want to check it out. But also, Tory Carter made a really sick one. That's also we got up there that you know he he's a really kind of short of stature guy and he reaches up right at the last second, gets that ball back shoulder going out of bounds. The ball's kind of a point blank trajectory. Uh, I thought that one would go through his hands, but no, he held on to that baby. There was a few drop passes um, from a from receiver in particular. I, I don't want to criticize him. I think they can work on that. But um, that's definitely something they need to pay attention to. But as far as these receivers, I expect uh, Jamar and Terrace to go in the first round. Kerry to go in those first three rounds at least. Some team's going to believe in what Kerry Vincent Jr. has to supply in the speed department, in the coverage department. He can play nickel corner and safety i mean this guy's tackling was was sorely sorely missed last year mark the angles he takes the speed he has the the brilliant uh, blasting hits he had an interception in every season had four picks last year uh that brilliant pick off jalen hurts in the oklahoma uh the game against oklahoma in that peach bowl that tells you everything about this guy's range and his tracking ability in the air but uh, yeah, it was a it was a successful pro day for LSU. It was a historic pro day for LSU. Just to go back and highlight uh, Jacoby Stevens' uh, play in the field to match what he did today, uh, just one of the more productive uh, defenders in recent times at LSU. 190 tackles during his career, basically coming over the final three seasons. 21 and a half tackles for loss, nine and a half sacks, four picks, 15 passes defensed. And again, as Lon tells us, and I'm looking right at it, go to lsuodyssey.com and you can just get lost in pro day coverage there. You've got um, Terrace Marshall, Jamar Chase, and and a number of other players uh, videotape right there to check out uh, what they performed on the field. Uh, Pro day press conferences are right there. Yeah, Coach O speaking after Tuesday's practice, talking uh, as we will in a few seconds with uh, with Lon concerning spring practice, and then back to the the pro day Terrace Marshall senior interview. So that's a great get for Lon, who's constantly getting um, top notch interviews right there. And again, more coming up with uh, Coach O and Durante Jones. I see there, so it's uh, it's all on display right there, very easy to find on the front page there of LSUodyssey.com. So check it out.